if this stock moves up from $215.38 to what Yahoo projects or predicts, which is $281.79, that's a 30.83% return by the end of the year. That's owning the stock. Those returns could be much larger if you're owning the option. Hey guys, I'm excited about presenting the analysis for you on this stock today. Once in a while, we have opportunities that present themselves in the market, and I feel this is one of those opportunities. Now, I can't guarantee anything. We know stocks can go up. And stocks can go down, prices can rise, prices can fall. So I can't make you any guarantees on what's going to happen with this stock, but I feel very good about it, and I'm going to present the analysis on to you, explaining why. This is a two-star. We know I break my stocks on my watch list down into three steer, three tiers. Three star, which is the most fundamentally sound, two star, which is believed beneath that, and one star, which is the least most fundamentally sound, but still fundamentally sound enough to make the watch list. Well, this is a two star. It is currently $219.91 a share. Yahoo analysts estimate in the next 12 months, it can go up to $281.79 a share. Now look at where this stock was up here in the 260 range. It's moving sort of sideways. And then it dropped significantly. It was actually all the way down here. It's already started to move back up. And now I'm going to explain to you what caused it to drop. But before we jump into that, guys, for those, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to suggest this in this week's option picks. And for those who take me up on it and you get that option and you make a lot of money, if you want to thank me, I'm a cheap date. You can just buy me your breakfast or something. I'm not expensive. $35 at IHOP. In any event, the cash app is dollar sign Dwayne Stock Advisory. That's dollar sign Dwayne Stock Advisory. And now let's jump into what caused air products and chemicals to drop. So, we spoke about earnings reports this week. Yum China Holdings and Hershey recently had earnings reports drop. Worked out for both, for both stocks. Those invested in them, we made some money. In any event, earnings report is like a report card for children. And imagine... With report cards, your kids are ready to get report cards, and they come back sort of preparing you for what's going to happen before they even get the report card, maybe a couple of days before. Well, we saw that happen with air, air products. It's shaping up to be a tough period for Air Products and Chemicals, Inc., which a week ago released some disappointing first quarter results that could have a notable impact on how the market views the stock. Air Products and Chemicals missed analyst forecasts. Now, what's an analyst forecast? An analyst forecast is when an analyst says what they think you're going to do. Let's say there was an analyst for your kids, and they said your kid had a C last semester, but the analyst says 
I think this semester he's going to get an A. And your kid ends up getting a B. Well, the B is better than the C, but that's not the way it's looked at in the market. The way it's looked at in the market is they missed expectations. And when that happens, people start selling their stock. And when they start selling the stock, the stock drops. So this is what happened. Analysts made a prediction of what they felt the stock was going to do. It didn't do that well. So they missed expectations. And people started selling. And the stock went down. Having said that, let's hear a little gossip about air products what are what's the chatter about that stock we know that there's gossip all around the world where there's, there's gossip in financial markets as well and let's see what some of the people are saying about this stock now remember this is just gossip this is a professional analyst or whatever but this is what people are saying about this stock. Rob M. on February 2nd said, People like to claim the markets are rational, but I am not convinced. This company posted both earnings and revenue growth at a time when it was facing strong pressure against being able to achieve either. But because the growth was lower than some guesses that analysts made, a bunch of people are selling off like the sky is falling. Well, good. I like buying stuff on sale. And there's a nice sale on APD stock today. So we see that Rob M feels positively about air products. What about Arrow 1050? Listen to the earnings call. And my views on this stock have not changed, despite the revenue and earnings miss announced this morning. The sharp drop in the share price at the open was clearly an overreaction to the sales and earnings miss. The volume shows that there has not been a big sell-off, and the share price has been gradually recovering since the earnings call. The institutions are not bailing and the stock has a strong base of support. This company has clearly positioned themselves for the longer term and I continue to believe that the share price will surge towards $400 by year end. I don't believe that's the case of Arrow 1050, but the Q&A on the call this morning was particularly enlightening as to the profitability of the many projects at various stages of development in their pipeline, which will begin kicking in this year and will continue to add incrementally to the bottom line over the next three to four years. My takeaway is that this management team knows what they're doing. This is a long-term hold, not a day trading stock. And then we have Gold Flask, March 30th, 2023. I bought this last year with the intention of never touching it and letting dividends accumulate over time. So SP doesn't bother me too much day to day. I think long-term prospects for this company are, are excellent. So... The chatter, the gossip, the conversations about this stock are very positive. And now we're going to depart the chatter and look into the actual numbers, the fundamentals for this stock. Air Products and Chemicals, Inc., ticker symbol APD, Let's look at the lower and higher prices for the last five years. Well, they do have the 2023 figures for this one. So in 2019, 
they made $137.96 at the low price, $218.87 at the high price. That was an increase of 58.65% over the year. In 2020, they made $161.08 at the low price, $289.80 at the high price. That was an increase of 79.91% throughout the year. Remember, that was our COVID lockdown year. In 2021, they made $235.78 at the low price, $297.54 at the high price. So our low price and high price are increasing every year so far. Now, in 2022, the low price was lower than the previous year, 207 dollars and 67 cents for the low price but 315 dollars and 74 cents for the high price higher than the previous year and a 52.04 percent return that year 2023 252 dollars and 84 cents at the low price three hundred and twelve dollars and seventy seven cents at the high price that was a twenty three point seventy percent return that year now we are catching this stock at two hundred and eighty oh, i'm sorry we are catching this stock at two hundred and fifteen dollars and thirty eight cents the current price now, because it's moved up, is $219.91. But when I caught it, it was $215.38 at a 20.57 PE ratio. If this stock moves up from $215.38 to what Yahoo projects or predicts, which is $281.79, that's a 30.83% return by the end of the year. That's owning the stock. Those returns could be much larger if you're owning the option, but that's owning the stock. Now, we're in February. Air Products has an earnings report coming out on May 7th of 24, 2024. So having looked at the prices, let's look at the income statement. <laughs> so, in 2019, they made 8,918,900,000 in sales and revenue. They retained 1,760,000 at the end of the year after paying expenses. That was a 19.73% return. In 2020, COVID lockdown year, they made 8,856,300,000 in sales and revenue. They retained 1,886,700,000 after paying expenses. That was a 21.30% return. In 2021, they made $10,323,000,000 in sales and revenue, and they retained $2,099,100,000 after paying expenses. That was a 20.33% return. 
in 2022, sales of revenue increased even more. It was $12,698,600,000 in 2022. That was a 17.77% return. And in 2023, they made 12 billion 600,000. By the end of the year, after paying all expenses, they retained 2 billion 300 million 200,000. That was a 18.26% return. Lower profit margin, not much. So I would say that's good to decent for those five years. And if we look at their return on equity, in 2019, their return on equity was 15.45%. 2020, it was 15.16%. 2021, it was 14.90%. 2022, it was 16.46%. And in 2023, it was 14.69%. And their debt to equity in 2019, 66.34%. 2020, 102, 102.27%. 2021, 90.65%. 2022, 98.45%, and 2023, 104.35%. So I would say their balance sheet probably be decent to good because their debt to equity was their current assets exceeded their current liabilities all five years and their total assets exceeded their total liabilities all five years. They did pay a dividend. In twenty nineteen they paid nine hundred and ninety four million. In dividends in 2020, they paid one billion one hundred and three million six hundred thousand. In 2021, they paid one billion two hundred and fifty-six million seven hundred thousand. In 2022, they paid one billion three hundred and eighty-three million three hundred thousand. And in 2023, they paid one billion four hundred and ninety-six million six hundred thousand. So they are paying a dividend. Now, the thing I don't like, you can have a company that can buy back their own shares. We always love that. Or they can be selling more shares, which we don't like. We know a company can make money in one of three ways. One way they can make money is by what they do for a living. Another way they make money is by constantly selling more shares of their stock. This company did that for all five years. In 2019, they sold 68,100,000 worth. In 2020, they sold 34,100,000 worth. 2021, they sold 10,600,000 worth. 2022, they sold 19,300,000 worth. And in 2023, they sold 24 million worth. So, that I don't like to see. And that would be a reason why I would have dropped them to a two star instead of a three star. The third reason is they're constantly taking out more loans. This company's balance sheet 
it was pretty decent, so I wasn't really concerned about that aspect. But selling more shares, I was concerned about. Now, here's another thing which was a red flag for me. In 2019, they had 991,300,000 in free cash flow. 2020, they had 836 million in free cash flow. 2021, they had 908 million, 500,000 in free cash flow. 2022, they had 290 million, 300,000 in free cash flow. But in 2023, their free cash flow was negative. 1 billion. 395 million 300,000. They probably had a very large expense that year, something they bought. The area of concern is that they're giving out a dividend, but your dividend should really be paid for from your free cash flow. Your free cash flow should be covering your entire dividends that you're giving out. Otherwise, you may have to borrow money just to be paying those dividends. Well, with this company, in 2019, after they paid the dividends, the leftover free cash flow was negative two million, two billion. I'm sorry, negative 2,700,000. In 2020, it was negative 267,600,000. In 2021, it was negative 348,200,000. In 2022, it was negative 1,093,000,000. And in 2023, it was negative 2,891,000,000. 900,000. So the question from me is why are you giving out a dividend if you can't afford to give out a dividend? Are you just giving out the dividend to attract people to buy your stock? Because you're really not in a position to be giving a dividend and you may as well not give one. Now, this company has a book value of $66.90 or PB ratio of 3.29. Their dividend, the last dividend they gave was $1.75 a share. That's a 3.25% dividend yield, which I would consider decent. Their PEG ratio was 3.11. The outstanding shares, 222.3 million. And of those outstanding shares, 0.32%, that's under 1%, are owned by insiders, those who work for or involved with the company. And 85.90% are owned by large banks and institutions. They will be giving a dividend. And that dividend, you have to own the stock before March 27th of 2024 to be eligible for that dividend. And dividend will be given out on May 12th of 2024. And we know that this stock with a 0.86% beta moves slower than the market, but not significantly. Now, Mr. Sifola Gusemi, born 1944. A little concerned about his age, but he is the chairman, president, and CEO. He joined the company in 2001 
and was appointed CEO in July of 2014. Air Products and Chemicals is in the specialty chemicals industry and the basic materials sector. So that's it for Air Products and Chemicals, guys. I see a couple of red flags with this stock, but I feel good about the long-term prospects of it. I feel good about where it's going to move up to in the long term. We know we can make no guarantees with stocks. We can make no guarantees they'll move up. We can make no guarantees they'll move down. But I feel pretty good about this one, guys. In any event, that's it for the analysis on this stock. You guys have a great night, and I look forward to speaking to you in the next video.